Hey everybody, it's Mr. Wagstaff. Cool stuff to talk about today. Uh, so today we're talking about everybody's favorite taxes. Basically, what are the different types of taxes and generally what they're used for. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be talking about taxation in, in a general broad sense. So the United States government isn't a company. They don't sell anything. The only way the United States government makes money uh, is for taxes. And then they turn around and they spend every penny that they bring in back into America. And then plus some, we go into debt. That's a whole nother thing. So today we're going to start talking about uh, taxes and how the government squeezes that money from the population uh, to get it and then what it's used for. But today the real focus is going to be on the different ways that the government gets the money from the population in order to provide the uh, services that it does. So taxation, uh, if you ever heard the old saying that the only two you know, guarantees in life are death and taxes, uh, that's pretty accurate. Your taxes are going to be there. Any government entity has to tax people. And we're actually going to talk about today that uh, not only are death and taxes inevitable, um, there is actually a tax on death. Anyway, uh, it's a little joke that doesn't make any sense right now because we haven't even gotten there. So it's literally a one person joke. Those aren't fun jokes. All right, so taxation is, is the act of the taxing authority, usually a government levying a financial obligation on its citizens or residents. Simply put, you have to give the government money. Now, how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of different ways. Uh, some days you guys are doing it already. Uh, uh, that if you go buy anything, there's going to be like a sales tax associated with it, uh, uh, which is especially in North Carolina. Uh, so you're constantly paying taxes and anything that you buy has a little upcharge on it. That's a tax that doesn't go to the, whoever's selling it to you. It's the, if you buy food at McDonald's and you have to pay extra taxes on it, then McDonald's takes that extra money you paid and they have to give that to the government as part of sales tax. Uh, and then they also have to pay their own taxes, but we'll get there. Uh, so general taxes that you pay when you buy things, there's an upcharge. There's also uh, sometimes, and this is, I'll get, go into more detail here, you get like a bill on taxes each year. Uh, you probably won't uh, here as, as a high school student. You're not going to get a tax bill. This is usually if, if you uh, have a house or something like that and you have to pay property taxes or, or some other type um, of estate tax and stuff that we'll talk about. You, you can get an actual bill. This is probably one of the, the less common ones. And usually if you get a tax bill, you're expecting it. It probably is not catching you off guard unless you never took this course and you're like, wait, what are taxes? Uh, and then uh, if you ever hear people talk about filing their taxes or doing their taxes, the, uh, there is a specific part, a time and period of the year in which you file your taxes. And I'm going to give you a little overview of what that means here today. But when we get into personal finance uh, section of this course, which is coming up soon, uh, we're going to go more into detail about what that means. But basically, uh, you owe taxes on all the stuff you've done the whole year, and you have to give that money to the government at the start of a new year. So uh, from like January 1st of a year until April 15th, it's like uh, the tax day. Between that time period of those like four months, uh, you have to like fill out all the taxes, tell the government how much that, uh, that you made and, and, and you have to pay them. Uh, and you're like, no, we're going to talk about that. The government knows you might think that they, that, uh, they have ways to, to make you pay. Uh, so let's talk about this is we're going to learn a lot about taxes. Uh, where do they go? This is the federal government. All right. They make trillions of dollars in tax, like $6 trillion, I believe is what the current amount is. But by the time you watch this, it's probably gone way up over that. Uh, so like Social Security, which gives elderly people who are retired, uh, gives them some money that they pay into the, their whole life and we pay for them. So it's 20% of all our taxes go to Social Security. 20% is defense, which is the military. So that's 40% right there. Healthcare, which is Medicare and Medicaid. And we are constantly criticized for having a very weak weekly funded organized healthcare system. Our healthcare system is fantastic. 
just how you pay for it is uh, under a lot of criticism. But even being criticized because we don't spend enough money on our healthcare system, we still literally spend more money on our healthcare than we do on the defense, on the military each year. Uh, safety net, uh, you see it's 13%. Um, that is like unemployment benefits and things like that. Uh, and you can see how it breaks down. This is for the, for the federal government. Now, the state government also provides services that are uh, separate from the federal government, but this is... Uh, when you pay taxes, you will pay more money to the federal government than you typically will a, uh, the state. So the question here is, what's the general purpose of taxes in the United States? Uh, so it's a pretty simple question there. But the one thing I do want to clarify here is everybody's like, oh, I don't like paying taxes because uh, it feels like you're like taxation is theft. It's not. It's how society works. Uh, it's not it's not theft. It's literally taxation. It's its own category. Um but uh, all the money that the government takes, they spend it back on the economy with roads and things like that. So the government's not just sitting on a huge Scrooge McDuck money bin. Now, can the government be inefficient with their money? Absolutely, and that's frustrating when they take your money and then they waste it on something that was stupid, in your opinion, because we, we can have those opinions. It's a free country. Uh, that you, you can be critical of the government uh, on that, and we, they try to avoid that. But generally speaking, the taxes in the United States are used uh, by the government to make a better life and uh, more consistent, stable economy uh, and making you know the American dream available for everybody, which is an ongoing theme we've been talking about here uh, in this unit. All right, so let's start talking about some specific taxes. So pause me, answer that completely, and we're moving on. So the first one we need to talk about is income tax. Income tax is the big mamma jamma. All right, so uh, income tax is a tax on any money that you make. So it's the uh, you know, official definition is payments made by individuals and corporations to a government entity based on their taxable income. Okay, cool, like this, this doesn't affect me, like whatever. Well, if you have a job, it does, all right? If you haven't had a job, let's walk you through, all right, how this would work. So you're gonna go get a job, we'll say you're working down at McDonald's, all right? Boom, you're hired. You got hired at Mickey D's, hooray. Now, why would you go work at McDonald's? You just really want to volunteer your time? No, no. You ain't got a job at McDonald's because you want them to pay you, all right? So you get paid a salary. Uh, or salary typically means it's like a set amount every month, uh, regardless of how much you work. Um, and then, but like McDonald's, you get paid in wages, which is like a certain money, uh, amount of money per hour. So let's say you go through and you're getting, you're working at, let's make this simple. You work over two weeks, you're paid $10 an hour. All right, awesome, all right. And you work 50 hours over two weeks, 25 hours each week, all right. You're doing the math in your head. That first paycheck's coming, you're excited. You're gonna get 500 bucks and this is probably you. This is probably you opening up that check. You cannot wait to get your 500 bucks. Now. The reason I'm using this specific video is actually a screenshot from a really awesome video of a dad videoing his son opening his first paycheck, which is exactly what you would be doing here, opening up your paycheck from McDonald's, all right? Because you're expecting $500. This is the, uh, the rest of the video. You can see he's excited. He opens it up. He's looking at his, at his check, and he's like, what the crap is this? All right, so let me show you what he's seeing and why he is unhappy with this, all right? Because he wasn't aware that taxes get taken out of your check, all right? So we'll say, and I just picked a random one here, trying to make, make it make sense. Let's say he made $500, all right? So at the top it says salaries, it's $500. That's the wages, that's how much that, you know, this fake paycheck they should have made, all right? Well, then it's like federal withholding, social security, Medicare, state disability insurance, state withholding. And then at the bottom, it says $375.78. That's how much your check is for. $375, not $500. Sure, you got paid $10 an hour, but in actuality, you weren't getting paid that, let me not jump in and confuse you. Uh, so you made $10 an hour, but you have to pay taxes on all this. And that comes out before you even get the money. 
So your check, when you're expecting $500, ends up only being $375. Now, while we're here on this side, I wanna go ahead and point this out. That top number, that big number before taxes, that's referred to as the gross pay. The actual amount of money that you get to go deposit in your bank account or go get cash for, that's called the net pay, all right? It would be so much easier to remember this if it was the opposite, where it was like the lower amount was the gross pay, like, oh, that's so gross. But that's not how it works. Gross is actually the, the, the bigger number. And then the net is uh, basically whatever's left that you caught in the net. Um, that is the net pay. Uh, so why is there a difference between the gross pay and the net pay? Well, it's because of all these things here, all right? All of that adds up, it's like a hundred, well, let's see if I can do my math, $124.22 should add up to that, I hope, because uh, that's the difference of 500 and 375.78. So you're like, this is some bull crap, but don't start thinking, well, all right, uh, I guess since I've already taken the taxes out, I don't have to like do my taxes at that tax time thing that Mr. Wagstaff talked about. Oh no, yes you do. Still need to do taxes. And you're like, why? So I have to pay more taxes? Mm -mm -mm -mm. See, this is how the government gets people to do their taxes. Uh, because you want to do your taxes. First off, you're like required to, and if you didn't do your taxes, you can get in trouble for it. But, all right, so at tax time, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? They already, they already took my money. I don't think, at like, uh, oh, what am I supposed to do? So since you work at McDonald's, all right, once the, you know, Christmas comes around, New Year's comes around, I was like, hooray, and it's the beginning of January. Every business that has employees around the country, right, they're required to give their employees a very important tax document called a W-2, right? This is for income tax stuff. So, uh, and this is a random version of one I got on, on the internet. It's going to kind of look like this. Uh, it's probably going to be like all nice and like sealed up, like really efficient, like tear off all the edges to get it to open up and it'll look like this inside. This tells you how much money you made that year and how much money was held out in taxes, all right? So basically, your paycheck is basically the little math of what happened the whole year, all right? If you only worked there three months, it's just gonna tell you the total amount that you made, how much uh, taxes got taken out. So when you get that, what you have to do is you're gonna have to file your taxes. And there's a bunch of different ways to file your taxes, and we'll reference that in, in personal finance thing. What you wanna do is you wanna tell the government hey, here's how much I made, here's how much my taxes were, all right? And you have to do that by April 15th, between January 1st and April 15th, if you get a W-2. Now, why do you want to do that? You're like, I already paid my taxes, I'm so tired of stupid government, because you in particular, if you're a full-time student, all right, the government probably accidentally, they knew they were gonna do this, they took out too much money. You know how you made $500 and they took out $125, all right, uh, every paycheck? Well, they probably took out too much. They probably only needed to take out about 110 So that's 15 extra dollars they accidentally took out. I, I say it's quite like it's nefarious. They're designed so you don't have to pay. But what will happen is when you file your taxes, they will realize you actually paid them too much money the whole year that you didn't really have a choice in, but you did and they will give you what's called a tax refund. Here's your money back, all right? And you might get two or $300 because it's the whole, like, oh, cool. However, if you don't file your taxes, you don't get that extra money back. And if you don't file your taxes, they're gonna think that maybe you're doing something shady and you actually owe them taxes and they'll, they'll come after you. Uh, and you don't wanna get on their bad side. So. Uh, you always have to do tax day. It's like, it's like a holiday. It's the same day every year, April 15th. Uh, from January 1st to April 15th, you have to like go in and file your taxes with the federal government for your income tax. So the question here is explain what income tax is and who pays it. It's you since you have a job. All right, uh, so pause me, answer that completely. We're moving on. All right. Let's hop through some of these other more obscure taxes. Honestly, uh, income tax you're gonna deal with almost immediately. The first time you get a job, you're gonna have to pay income tax. Uh, sales tax, we'll, we'll get that in a second. But these right here are actually more obscure, but it's important to understand 
uh, these different types of taxes. So these are typically for adults and us olds. Uh, we deal with these uh, more often than, than you will when you're younger. First one is capital gains tax. Now, let me say that if you're like an independent millionaire uh, and you created a YouTube channel and you're making tons of money, these are types of things you'll have, have to worry about. But typically, if you're just living paycheck to paycheck uh, uh, early on in, in your career before you become more financially stable, you're not gonna deal with a lot of these. But let's start with explaining what they are. Capital gains tax, right? This is going to sound like this is something that super rich people deal with, and it's not. It, it, and people make that mistake. They think this is just rich people problems so they don't learn about it and then they get in their life and then they get crushed with this when they're not expecting it. So capital gains tax is a tax paid by an investor upon selling their asset based on the amount by which the asset appreciated during the time it was held. Let me tell you what that means, all right? Uh, the easiest one here, and we got some stocks, we got some fancy pottery and stuff here. Let's talk about a house. You buy a house. That house, right, is worth $200,000. You buy it for $200,000. Hooray. And then the market gets good and you turn around and you sell that house for $250,000. You made a profit on it, all right? Capital gains tax. Since you made $50,000 profit off of that house, you don't just get to keep that $50,000 you have to pay capital gains tax, which is, I think it's like 20%, 14%. So in that case, it'd be about $10,000 uh, of that. If it was 20%, uh, percent, it'd be $10,000 uh, that you would have to then owe the government. So if you're like, hey, cool, I made $50,000 profit, hooray, I'm gonna go buy a new car. Uh, and then you go buy a new car and you don't got that money left. And the government's like, hey, by the way, you owe us $10,000 now. And people, that can catch you off guard. It's, but you're not being taxed on the entire $250,000, just the amount that it appreciated over time. There's always loopholes to this. Like, if you pay, uh, bought that for $250,000, but then turned around and bought another house, you're good. Like, taxes are not simple. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot they talk about loopholes. Like, depending on, if you just keep that money, yes, you have to pay taxes on it. If you turn around and reinvest it, you don't necessarily. So this is why tax accountants are very, very important uh, when you start dealing with large sums of mon money and buying large pieces of property. All right, so that's capital gains tax. Let's talk about an estate tax, all right? This is sometimes referred to as an inheritance tax. Can't, two things unavoidable, death and taxes. This is literally like getting taxed after you die. So uh, this is the state tax levied on the value of inherited assets paid by the inheritor rather than the estate of the uh, deceased. Do what, Mr. Wexeff? So say that you have a rich uncle and they leave you one million dollars. You they pass away and they've saved their money their entire life and never spent it. They have a million dollars and they give you a million dollars. You're like, yes, I'm rich. Oh, no, 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 no. The government, they want their cut. Is this controversial? Yeah, people get irritated about by this uh, because uh, your rich uncle might not have, has already paid taxes on all this money. But when they give it to you, it gets taxed heavily. So depending on how much money that uh, you get, it gets taxed. So if it's, um, let's say, uh, uh, $10,000, you have to pay 18%. Let's go all the way down to the bottom of this list and you got $1 million. You would have to pay almost $400,000. 40% of that million dollars goes to the government. Do you end up with $600,000? Absolutely. But you have to pay $40,000 to the government with an estate tax. This is, uh, and this can vary by state, all right? So, it, and when you start talking about stuff that the, the state regulates, it can vary wi wildly from state to state. Some would have none, some would have more. But uh, in North Carolina, there is an estate tax. Uh, so if you're super rich uh, and you're like 110 years old, you, you might want to think about going ahead and starting to give some of that money away uh, to people that, that you like. Uh, because if you don't, 
You can't take it with you, as they say. When you pass away, the government is going to take like a, a good chunk of that. And that's called the estate tax. Now, before we throw stones and we're like evil government taxes, these taxes, all this money goes right back into the economy for roads, for schools, for for other services. So it, it, there's pros and cons here, but the estate tax uh, gets people pretty grumpy. Now, you would think this next tax we're going to talk about, property tax, would also get people grumpy, but actually it was poor people who begged for this at the turn of the century. All right. So what was happening was rich people in the late 1800s were buying up all the property, all the land. And poor people and middle class people couldn't afford it because rich people just sat on it and just to see what would happen. All right. So poor people said, hey, government, you want to tax everything else? Why don't you tax property? Because rich people who buy like half a state, like the other side of the country, they've never even been there just to have it. Uh, they're probably not going to want to hold on to all this property if they have to pay taxes on it every year which is exactly what happened. People typically only buy properties that they want to use and, and, and have themselves because you have to pay property tax on it every year. When I say property tax, uh, I do not mean like your, your cell phone or your computer, all right? That's not the property I'm talking about. It's really only houses, um, cars, and boats, I think. Houses, cars, and boats. Um, I'm not sure if every boat, if you have like a little canoe, if you have to pay property tax on that. But like the huge big ticket items, uh, you would have to pay pr uh, property tax on. And usually car property tax is, is very minimal, but housing tax, the uh, property tax for a house, it can be substantial. So here's an example. Uh, so um, if you own a house, uh, you know, we're looking at what, 1% maybe is, is the property tax depends on how expensive your house is, how much your house is worth. So if your house is worth 200, probably $250,000, and again, this varies wildly, not only by state, but by town, because towns do a lot of these taxes. If, you, if your house is worth $250,000, you're probably going to spend uh, this here in North Carolina in the modern days, about $2,500 per year is what you have to pay for your house. If you don't pay this, they can come take your house from you. you Gotta pay your taxes. Even if you own it and you've paid for it, you still have to pay taxes on it every single year. Again, the government's gonna get their taxes. Now, uh, a lot of times if you have what's called a mortgage, you're paying a loan off, this taxes are like rolled into it. So you're actually paying on it every month. So unless you absolutely outright own your house uh, and you don't have any payments to the bank or anything like that, uh, you're probably not going to get this actual bill. But I really like this example bill here because, and this is, I say that, I actually do get one of these bills for my house, uh, but it does break down where the money is going, which is really cool. And you can see like fire departments, uh, this one says zoo authority, uh, street lighting, you know, the, so those things aren't free uh, and they're paid for tax dollars and it comes from property tax. Property tax uh, is pivotal to paying for uh, schools. A very, very uh, common thing. So typically places that have really high property taxes usually have really good schools. Those things usually are similar. And especially states that pay their teachers a lot of money usually have much higher property taxes than uh, states that don't pay teachers as much. Um, but the amount owed, like it's 2538 that would be different for every single person in the same neighborhood that owned a house. It's based on how much your house is worth. Just like your estate taxes, how much you have to pay in that inheritance tax is how much money that you, uh, you get. Or if you inherit a house, you still have to pay property taxes on that or inheritance tax on top of property tax. Uh, so the question here is, how is the amount owed in property and or estate taxes determined? So pause me, answer that completely. We're moving on. All right, sales tax. Well, I think you're pretty good on what this is. It's literally extra money like you going, oh, it's 99 cents for this burrito. Uh, it's not going to be 99 cents when you go to pay for it. It's gonna be like a dollar six. You're used to that probably if you've ever spent money. That's sales tax. That is stuff uh, that the state, all right, adds on to it to have revenue to pay for the stuff the state needs to do. Different states have different sales taxes, all right? Some states don't even have a sales tax at all. 
Like North Carolina is almost 7%, uh, which is number 26. So we're right smack dab in the middle. Um, let's see, uh, like, looks like Montana does not have a sales tax. Um, Delaware does not have a sales tax. Uh, Oregon does not have a sales tax. Uh, and then what's the, like, uh, California is 8.6. Uh, I'm trying to glance at this real quick and see which is number one. You can, Washington's 9.23. Where's number one at? I'm not gonna waste your time. You can look at it. Uh, so, but you're like, Montana doesn't have a sales tax. That's awesome. Montana isn't going without tax money. They're just getting their tax money from somewhere else. <clears throat> All right. Now let's talk about excise tax. An excise tax is an extra tax that the government puts on stuff uh, that they kind of want to control how much you're buying, right? So they artificially inflate the prices of stuff to kind of prevent you from buying stuff they don't really want you buying too much of. Uh, beer, let's use that as an alcohol, always has an excise tax. Uh, so 43% uh, <clears throat> of uh, a bottle of alcohol or alcohol in general is as is, is taxes the government calls alcohol has been around since the beginning of time and it's pretty much dirt cheap to make uh, uh but the reason it can be expensive is because the government puts all these extra taxes on it to kind of curb people from buying it but if you do want to buy it then you're helping out the government because you're using that tax money for other parts of society another thing that gets a tax on it is fuel so this is becoming a current here in 2023 when I'm recording this. Uh, it's just now starting to be a question since people are going to uh, electric cars. The way roads are paid for is there is an excise tax on gas. There is a base price that is set by Exxon, these other oil companies, the Middle East. That sets the base price. Then the states and the federal government, they add extra taxes on top, which are excise taxes, uh, so that they can regulate. If we have a shortage of gas, they can increase the prices with the taxes so that it can limit people from only buying what they absolutely need. But these excise taxes are directly used to pay for the roads. When the roads need replacing, they do that, which is very fair. The people who buy more gas are obviously driving more, and therefore they pay a bigger share of keeping the roads. So the question ends up becoming people that are using electric vehicles are not paying any taxes to repair the roads. So how's that going to work uh, since the only people paying taxes to fix the roads are gas powered cars. And this is only just now, uh, 2023 starting to be like, I wonder if we're gonna fix that. So if you're seeing this in years after 2023, there's probably been discussions about how to do this. So the question here is what is the purpose of sales tax and what is it used for? to kind of explain what a sales tax is and then give me a generic answer here on what taxes are, are generally used for. We've talked about it quite a bit. All right, so pause me, moving on. All right, governmental fees. I want to throw this in here at the end. Governmental fees are a little different than taxes. So taxes, everybody kind of pays it. Uh, uh, you know, the, it's closer to an excise tax, but a government fee is an actual charge for a specific thing or a service that you want that is provided by the state. Let me give you an example. If you wanna buy a fishing license in North Carolina, I don't think it's super expensive. I should have looked that up before I uh, said this. Uh, but uh, you have to buy a fishing license if you wanna fish in a lot of places in North Carolina. It's not crazy expensive. I guess it's $25, I could, it's, it's not a lot. Uh, but you are buying that license, that's a government fee. That $25 goes and helps pay for uh, uh, game wardens and these other people's salaries. Most of the time, none of these fees add up to, a, to enough to actually pay these people's salaries. They're paid with extra taxpayer stuff, but this is a direct contribution to specific services. Uh, so a fishing license is an example. Also, if you go to the DMV and you need to get a, uh, a license, you have to pay for that. That is a governmental fee to pay for the license. Uh, license plates, um, registration, those types of things uh, require fees. And so those are only given to people who are asking for that specific service or getting that specific license. Uh, you know, license registration, renewal uh, fees aren't given to people who don't have a license or don't drive. So fees are assessed for specific services that people are asking for the government to provide. All right, so the question here is explain what a government fee is and how it differs from taxes. That's what I got for you guys today. See y'all tomorrow.